in your job right now? Are you feeling underappreciated or not appreciated at all? Have you thought maybe about owning your own business, but that was kind of scary, right? It could be overwhelming and frustrating. What if there was a way you could own your own business, but have all the tools and support that you need to be successful? What would your answer be? That'd be a heck yeah, right? Are you ready to make a pivot in your career? Are you looking to break that six-figure income? Hey, if you are, grab your coffee, water, tea, notepad, or laptop because you want to tune in and listen to the stories of these amazing women and how they pivoted in their career and how they transformed not only their life, but their financial life, their family's life. I don't work for Appreciation Financial or Hollywood's Great. I'm Mary Fane Brown, the co-host and producer of the WOW Women of Wealth Summits. We're bringing you these monthly summits to showcase some different opportunities for you. Now, instead of me telling you about Holly's journey, why don't we just go ahead and welcome her to the show and she can tell you how she got started to Appreciation Financial. <laughs> there you go, Holly. How are you Here doing? I am. I'm doing great, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm so excited. Um, just so the viewers know, like I talk to all of the women that are coming on this summit. We do a little like rehearsal and like, hear what their story is. And I was so impressed and mesmerized by their stories. And it's such a diverse group that you have on. So we have people of all ages, all income, you know, all over the United States. So I love that it's not just focused on one particular um uh, one particular age, one particular, like, you know, you have to have a degree. It's a really diverse group of women that you've put together. And I have to say, I love your mission of empowering women to create their own wealth. I, I love that. I just love that about you. So why don't we tell the audience how you got started and, and how your own pivot happened? Yeah, great. So thank you so much, Mary, for hosting with me. Um, this is one of my most exciting times is getting to uh, have our monthly summit. So thank you for being my cheerleader and always keeping me on track. Um, so the way I got started with Appreciation Financial is I was at a crossroads. I owned a volleyball club. Yes, volleyball, I said. I was a former athlete and a coach, and I decided during the recession to start a volleyball club, which was a nonprofit organization. I'll give you a tip right now. The worst time to, set up, to start a nonprofit organization, at least in my experience, was during a recession. Um, so for me, I was in the middle of making a decision on what I was going to do with my volleyball club. And I had an opportunity to go out and staff a personal professional leadership training class. And during that time when I was out there, I met Terry Kennedy, who's the CEO of Appreciation Financial. Now, at the time, he had this program called the Ambassadors Program, and it was a way for nonprofits and other people in the community to give referrals to Appreciation Financial. I would get licensed, and then I would make a percentage for my nonprofit. Well, if I would have found Appreciation Financial maybe a year or two earlier, that may have saved my club. But unfortunately, at that point, uh, the club was a little too far gone. So once I wrapped up closing the club and everything, I decided to jump into Appreciation Financial. And you are absolutely right, Mary. We have some fantastic people, especially the women at Appreciation Financial. They're very unique. They come from all walks of life, and they really are um, here to serve their communities and serve those teachers and other people that we work with, either in the school district 
or outside of the school district, like people who are, you know, retiring <laughs> or want to retire. Right. Or even business owners. So true Absolutely. story, Holly, we met, I think it's been about four years, three to four years ago um, through a networking group, you know, and, and then we've worked together, you know, you've hired me and now just this year, I'm happy to say I'm part of that appreciation financial um, clientele. So again, I don't work for the company, but it took you a while. Like we had to keep meeting and I wanted to, I didn't understand things. I had all these questions. So if anyone's watching and you're like, but I don't understand retirement, like that was me, you guys. I didn't understand it either. And what I loved about you, Holly, is that you sat down with me several times and jumped on the phone to explain things so I could understand what I was doing. And I'm very appreciative that you took the time for that. And I'm happy to be your client now. And again, I just really love the work that you're doing is setting these women up for success. And, and letting them, like the sky's the limit when listening to some of these stories, it's amazing. So you guys, if you're looking for a pivot in your career or you got laid off because of the pandemic and it's time for you to pivot or switch industries or careers, this might be the right opportunity. We have a diverse group of women coming on today to share their stories and I'm sure that you can relate to one of them. So let's see, let's do this right. So first up, we have Susan Creekmore. Susan, welcome. Um, it's interesting when we're on these calls because I'm not sure how much people can hear whenever the slide is up. I'm not sure if it's me talking or Mary talking. So we're testing things out today. So uh, bear with us if you're in the audience. But welcome, Susan. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I have to call you Mama Creekmore. Um, so she's going to share her story. I'm not going to take her thunder. But thank you, Susan. You've now been with Appreciation. I believe it's five years, but why don't you start sharing a little bit of your story and how you got introduced to insurance and Appreciation Financial. Yeah, thank you for having me, Holly. I think I'm the first one from uh, the East Coast to join. So this is, this is pretty amazing. Um, I came about Appreciation a little bit different than most people. My son is an MVP with Appreciation and I started out as his admin. Uh, he didn't have enough to keep me busy. And about three months in, he told me to go get my license. This is, um, I was 55 years old. I thought he was crazy, as you can imagine. And um, I, t I told him, I argued with him. I said, I'm not a salesman. This is not something that I do. And he's like, go get your license. This is not sales. This is education. So I took that leap of faith. I went and I got my license and started working with appreciation has been right at five and a half years ago now. It was terrifying at the beginning. I was absolutely, you know, I, I came in on behind Eric. So I had some huge shoes to fill and a huge uh, six foot three shadow looming over me. But it was actually something that Holly said um, at the first WOW conference, which was about five or six months into my career, was that I needed to own the fact that Eric was my son, not the fact that I'm his mom. So um, I, I can't thank Holly enough for that, for helping me step into my own shoes as far as that goes. But um, it's been a kind of crazy beginning for me. So did did you have something, Holly, that, that you wanted to, to share on well, that? Why don't you share a little bit about what you did before you came to Appreciation Financial? Because I think that's an interesting segue too, to see, to see yeah, you weren't really into sales before, but you had a long career and you had a, you know, you worked for a very important agency. So why don't you share a little bit about that too? Yeah, I worked for 32 years, the entire space shuttle program at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And uh, I was in human resources. It was pretty amazing. And the shuttle program ended. I was able to get another job on the um, unmanned side at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and uh, about six months or so into that, I ended up after 32 years of marriage, finding myself suddenly divorced and kind of at a crossroads. And that's how I moved down to South Florida. That's where both of my kids were living at the time. Uh, that was another one. I went kicking and screaming. I did not want to live in South Florida, but uh, my kids are down here. My two granddaughters are down here. So this is where I belong. And this is where I started over. I was at that crossroads where 
I could either continue being broke and broken, or I could take that leap of faith. I could decide, you know what? I can remake myself. I can do what is best for Susan. I can find out who I am. And this opportunity has made me a lot stronger than I ever thought that I was. Um, it's showed me that I can do things completely out of my comfort zone. And um, at 55 years old, you can start over. You, you don't have to be 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old. You can start yourself, start over at any age, any stage in your life and turn that into a six figure income. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's great. And um, so, you know, we have our mantras, right? We help a lot of people. We create life changing wealth and we get better every day. Which one of those do you think that you identify with the most or you have the most pride in sharing with people whenever we're talking about our mantras? Yeah. So the one that I identify the most is that we create life changing wealth. And that's not just for our clients, guys. This is everybody that you care enough about to give this opportunity to. Eric cared enough about me and saw enough about me to bring me into the business. Three years ago, I brought my niece, Melissa, into the business. She's a six figure income earner as well. And last summer, my uh, daughter, who is uh, she's been a pediatric nurse for 10 years. She also joined appreciation. So there's four of us that are related all in Florida that have uh, taken advantage of this opportunity and it's completely changed all of our lives. Yeah, that's so great. I love hearing that story about all your family who's now gotten into the business and how they've started to create life changing wealth for themselves as well. Now, I know you guys have a pretty good sized team down there in Florida. Talk a little bit about the training and the onboarding process. Yeah, so I wish we'd had all this training and onboarding five and a half years ago when I came on board, but everything has evolved so much. And we've got um, just in Florida, either led or, uh, direct to me or co-led to me. I've got about 35 agents. So um, coming on board is a simple process. It's just a matter of registering. And from the minute you make that first uh, almost hit enter, you're going to get a welcome email. You're going to get links to um, setting up all of your, your accounts, your back office, your email, how all of that's going to work. You're going to get online training. You get um, uh, Fast Start, which is a generally a two day training and it's going to teach you everything you need to know about getting started. We have daily trainings. There's there's you can't say enough about the training and the opportunities with appreciation as far as what's available. We have our own CRM. We have our own back office and it's tailor made for appreciation financial agents. Yep, absolutely. And so um, I know we're going to talk a little bit about this at the end, but why don't you share with everyone a little bit about your why and why appreciation would be a good choice for somebody who maybe is in that you know, looking for what's going to be their last career before they really do retire and how can they come to a place like you did, you know, later in your in your life, later in your career where you wanted to um, maybe not really want to take the chance, but you jumped in anyway and why that would be such a great opportunity for other women or men that are there in that same uh, time in their life. Yeah. So many people are either stuck because they feel like there's nowhere to go or they just haven't thought about a totally different career, which if you'd asked me six years ago, if I would be doing this, I would tell you, heck no. But um, just taking that leap of faith, taking that chance that this is something that, that could totally change your life, ch change your family's life. And my why is to replace my retirement income that um, through a number of different events, the housing market crash, the, um, um, some medical issues my ex-husband went through, our divorce. I was literally broke. I did not have a penny to my name when I started this career. So I need to replace that retirement that was lost so that when I do retire, not only can I, you know, take trips and enjoy myself, have fun with the grandkids, but so that I'm not a financial burden to my kids as well. Yeah, I see so many people, so many of our clients want that as one of their goals too. So it's great that you have that passion and you definitely are creating that with uh, Appreciation Financial because if you're not vested yet, you're very close to being vested. And so that is one of the great opportunities that we have. 
So Susan, is there anything else you want to share before we um, bring on our next guest, before we go to, uh, you know? Yeah, to just, yeah, just don't let age or, or what you've done in your past, don't let any of that define you. Take that chance, take that leap of faith. And with all of the tools that Appreciation Financial has and the support system, if you follow it, you cannot help but to be successful. You will succeed. Yeah, that's great. I always tell people, learn the system, right? Just learn the system. Once you learn the system, you can change what you want to do, how you do it, but learn the system, learn to do it the way that other successful people have done it, and you'll be successful yourself. So again, Susan, thank you so much for being a part of the show today. We're going to bring you on at the end of the show just to have you give people one last uh, bit of tip or nugget that you have to share with them. But Mary, if you want to go ahead and bring up Ashley's side, introduce Ashley. Ashley, she'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but she's been with Appreciation Financial for, I believe, five or six years now, six years at least. So she'll correct me if I'm wrong, but let's go ahead and bring up her slide. Hi, Holly. Hi, welcome, welcome, Ashley. Thank you so much. Is it seven years now you've been with Appreciation? I so, lose track. Yeah, seven years in June. Uh, it was June of this year was seven years. So about a month and a half ago, I hit seven years, which is crazy because it has flown by, absolutely flown by. Yeah, so why don't you just share a little bit because, you know, Ashley had a very unique way of uh, coming into Appreciation Financial. She was successful before with a full insurance agency that she owned. And uh, why don't you just take it from there and kind of share how you got here and what you're doing now with appreciation? Absolutely. I So I've uh, this is my 15th year in the business. So I actually started um, my career in uh, insurance and financial services when I was 21 as a marketer and a recruiter for a uh, independent marketing organization in Dallas, Texas. And it was really cool because I was able to, um, in that job for, for four years, really kind of go to the, uh, the college of insurance is what I called it, because I got to learn all about um, how a back office works, commissions, contracting um, and negotiating contracts with carriers, lead generation, marketing, um, underwriting, case design, everything, uh, you know, the full gambit and also in multiple niches. So senior, uh, you know, senior seminars, 403B market, mortgage term, final expense. I, it was just a really cool experience. And so I took that and started my own agency um, in 2008, which was an interesting time. It was right at the beginning of the recession. Uh, which is, it was kind of funny, you were talking about, you know, starting a business in the middle of a recession, and it it actually um, ended up being very beneficial just because of the, the types of products that we um, sell are all guaranteed safe. So, um, you know, it was a, an amazing time to help people secure their retirement and more safer investments. And um, we started a 403B agency and a um, wealth advisory for seniors and had that agency for about five years and actually directly competed with appreciation. So I had you know, seen um, AF grow um, from the time that they started in, in 2008. And we always had friendly competition between each other. And in 2013, I sold the shares in my company and my agency. And um, Terry came and, and scooped me up and asked me to uh, do a lot of the things for AF that that I had put for you know put in place for my company and uh, the rest is history. So I've I've kind of ran the full gambit with AF as well. Yeah. So Ashley has uh, she started what we call our new business concierge department, which is the um, the best thing that's ever happened to Appreciation Financial. I will say because what it does is it gives us agents and uh, the agents on our team a place to go where. They can get their deals processed. They can get uh, answers to some of their questions that they might have about whether a person is eligible for a product or whatnot. Um, and then she turned that over to someone else who's running it now. And she was out in the field and she was uh, running a team of her own out in Dallas and in Austin and all over Texas. And then now she's back at the home office uh, being a liaison to our CEO and really bringing some additional great 
um, products and services to our field. So why don't you share a little bit about that, Ashley, about what uh, the opportunity has, how the opportunity has changed over the last seven years and why uh, anybody looking for something new knew how much better it's gotten as a result of a lot of the efforts that you've put in. Absolutely. Um, I think, and, and Susan had mentioned it earlier, there, anywhere you turn, there is support um, inside of appreciation. So um, whether that's wanting to practice and uh, really hone in on your sales ability and your closing skills, all the way to goal setting and leadership, to understanding products and insurance and um, all the back office systems. So there's just a ton of support. And I think that that's very unique because um, IMO stands for independent marketing organization. And really the function of an IMO is to help you build a business and get in front of people. And unfortunately nowadays it's, it's kind of difficult. Um, and so you don't see a lot of IMOs that, that have really, um, you know, created a, a very specific niche where there is so much opportunity like what we have. So I think that we're very unique um, in that area uh, as an IMO um, because we actually, you know, we get you in front of people. And not only do we get you in front of people, we then show you what to do when you're in front of them, how to best support the client all the way through the sales process to getting your, you know, business, you know, paid for and, and, and everything that falls in between. So it is very unique to have an organization like this with as much support, but then also the ability to um, keep you as busy as, as possible. I, I think that this pandemic has actually created some blessings um, for us because we've been able to reach so many uh, teachers over the last four or five months. I think that we are almost um, at 80 plus thousand appointments that we have been able to run since um, early March of this year. So when you think about that, how many people have we been able to impact through a very uh, tumultuous time, not only in our economy, but just in general with um, pension and, and all of the different things that are happening. So the fact that people um, want information and we were available to give it to them during this time, I think is really important and it's something to be noted. Uh, the fact that we do have so much opportunity and can get in front of so many people. Absolutely. And what would you say is like, I talked to Susan about this as well. You know, we have our mantras. Which one do you think you most identify with? I think, so I, like I identify personally with, we help a lot of people. Um, so that, and not only with our clients, but I think for me personally, because um, I usually am involved in a lot of the different projects that help uh, with AF when it comes to making it better or bringing on, um, you know, new opportunities. So I really do believe that we are helping people. Um, in 15 years of working in, in retirement and pensions, Every single time that I talk to a client, there is a sense of relief that happens at the end of that call. They're usually, you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed and have no idea, you know, what to expect. A lot of them are clueless as to what's going on with their pension. They know they've been paying into this, you know, thing at the, you know, out of their check, but they have no idea what's going to happen. And so even in just a 45 minute phone call, hanging up and knowing that there are solutions that we're going to be able to provide, but also knowing that we left people better than we found them. And they have that sense of um, confidence now that they knew more than they did when they got on that call initially, I think is really cool. Um, I get super excited about that because people are just so nervous because they're, I don't know anything about this. And they, they hang up the, the call really confident about what it looks like moving forward. So I think helping a lot of people is, is extremely important. Now, I'm going a little off script, but, um, you know, we have our family environment here, and I know that you've really been able to cultivate that family as well. What would you say is like, like can you describe it a little bit? Because it's like so hard to describe just the family atmosphere that we have at Appreciation Financial. We, uh, it is the most, you know, when I said it was a unique opportunity earlier about the fact that, you know, we have so many people we can get in front of and all these resources and, you know, just the way that the company itself is structured, I think is awesome. However, the most special part of appreciation is truly that family element. And we call it an AF family, not only because we have 
families like the Creekmoors, where you literally have four or five family members that are working together, um, us as agents become family with each other. And it's awesome because we support one another and it's just a very dynamic and unique um, environment. And I've never really been part of a, a, an organization or a company that had that sense of home and, and family atmosphere to it. Um, sometimes we, we bicker like family, which is awesome because we, you know, are, are pushing each other to, to get better and, and be better. Um, at the end of the day, though, I know that not one person that is part of our organization would hesitate to jump at supporting any one of us at any given time, whatever that looks like. So I, I just think that in this day and age, and especially in insurance, I think that it's an amazing industry. However, there's also... Um, a lot of companies that, that don't necessarily have that culture. There's a lot of um, situations with, with this industry that you can find yourself in where um, it's just, it, it can just be a little dodgy. And so the fact that we have such a special, special group, I think is really cool. Yeah, I, I really love that too. And I love the fact that you mentioned uh, the family, just like a regular family. Sometimes we get into little arguments or whatever. Oh, yeah. But, you know, we work our way through it and it just makes us stronger. You know, yeah. I mean, like, like me and Brett, we talk about being brother and sister. We sometimes fight like brother and sisters. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like the, gonna be out it's next the month, holidays so sometimes. That's right. Yeah. Sometimes we get together and it's like a dysfunctional Thanksgiving. <laughs> and it's awesome. <laughs> it's so, awesome. Um, a little bit more about just, how about you just talk a little bit more about you know, the appreciation op opportunity. I mean, I know it didn't really change your life because you were already very successful before you came here. You're already financially successful as well. But tell us a little bit more just about that opportunity, maybe a little bit about your why and why somebody would really want to look at appreciation for their next opportunity. Absolutely. And, and truly, it did change my life. Um, you know, we all define success differently. And I think that, you know, obviously having... Um, Financial success is important because we get to do the things that we want and, and go with be with our family and you know do awesome things. But I I truly um, appreciate the fact that um, I got to be a part of of this this group. And and in 2013 I was at a crossroads with my own company and it was my baby and I didn't want to give it um, give it up and it was very difficult. However, the atmosphere and the direction that um, it was headed was just not um, truly where, where my passion lied. Um, and it, it didn't have um, just, I didn't have that fire in me. And so um, ever since uh, joining AF, it has been something new and fresh and different and challenging and exciting. Um, there's a family element. I have some of um, my best friends I have, have met with this company. And it's just, uh, I would say that it, it definitely has been life changing, not only because there is always an infinite amount of people to see and, and resources and, and income that can be earned. Um, I think that what's truly special is just the environment that we've created. And, and I think that um, that is life changing because you genuinely enjoy what you're doing when you love the people you're, you're doing it with. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about your why. So my why, um, I love, I love putting systems into place, and I love putting puzzle pieces together. And so my why, um, you know, for for what I specifically do with AF right now, that really fulfills that purpose because I love um, seeing, you know, uh, a challenge or uh, an issue that needs to be solved, and then figuring out putting all the puzzle pieces together. Um, for that. So, so my why for what I'm doing right now with AF um, is because it really fulfills um, that passion of mine. Um, and my why personally um, with AF is because I truly enjoy traveling and spending time with my family and, and creating that liberty where um, I can support the people around me, whatever that might look like, whether that be my time or my finances um, with my friends or my family. I just ha I love the ability of having um, that liberty to do what I want, when I want, wherever I want, however I want. And, and that can look a lot of different ways. And, and oftentimes that's 
um, spending it with the people that I love and, and being of service and, and being able to give of myself because I do have that freedom. Absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Ashley, for being on the show. Um, just hang out. We're going to bring you back on at the end yeah. and you'll be able to uh, share your last thoughts with the, with the listeners and the, and the viewers out there. But thank you. So next up is Pen Penelope. I call her Penny. Uh, Marino, let's go ahead and bring her slide up. So Penny has been with appreciation um, the least amount. Well, actually, that's not true because Brittany's been here a little bit less than Penny has. She's our last speaker. But Penny's been with appreciation now for uh, a couple of years. She came to us uh, in a very special way as well. So we're going to go ahead and bring Penny on so she can tell her story. I don't want to steal her thunder. Um, but I will <laughs> say that uh, the person that brought Penny into the business happens to be on my team. He was uh, one of my clients and he came in the business kind of the same way that she did. So Penny, welcome. Thank you for being here. Hi, Holly. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for having me. Of course. So if you could just share a little bit with the viewers, a little bit about how you got to be here with appreciation and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> well, it was definitely uh, something unexpected and uh, I used to work uh, in the retail business. I had to find a part-time job when I was going to school. I was in Santa Barbara and I needed a little break and I had convinced my dad to uh, let me take a year off and he had helped me with my expenses. So the one thing he said to me, you better look for a job then if you're going to take that time off. And I did. I, I, uh, I thought I was so excited. I'm going to look for a part-time job until um, I can go to Sa San Diego here in where I live because I was homesick in Santa Barbara. Uh, my part-time job was uh, with a company that was very popular at the time. It was a cosmetic company. I, uh, I started working for Mac Cosmetics, and that was fun. I was uh, single. I was young, and they were paying me pretty good. They were paying me double of what minimum wage was. So for me, that was excellent. I was very excited, and I was working there for a little bit, and then um, I was offered a full-time position. And um they had offered me more pay and benefits. I really didn't care about benefits. I was single. I didn't really even think about my benefits. I just thought, oh, okay, more pay. I'll definitely go ahead and do that. Um, so I started working full time there and my part time job became 14 years. I ended up being there for 14 years just because life happened and I ended up, I felt uh, stuck for a little bit. And so uh, I got married, I had children, and that's when I realized how important benefits are. And I, I had my two kids, and um, I call them my Mac babies because Mac paid for my babies. I had really good benefits. I was paying less than $400 a month for my benefits with all my family covered with PPO. So as a company, they were offering the great, great opportunities and uh, for benefits. And I ended up staying. I was paying a daycare for my children. I was paying over a thousand dollars a month in daycare. So I felt like I had to stay there, even though the schedule of retail is a monster. I don't know if anybody knows what that schedule looks like, but you're working holidays, you're working um, weekends, nights, there's inventories, which is all nighters. And towards the end of my career with Mac, I literally was going and I was finishing my Thanksgiving dinner and going and leaving my four year old, my two year old and my husband so that I can work for Black Friday and pulling an all nighter. I would go in at midnight and my quality of life with my family ended up being uh, it, it was suffering because of it. I my children, uh, my, my daughter would get upset every time she'd see me put on my makeup. She knew where I was going to go and I was going to be gone for a long time. So um, once the retail industry started hurting because of online shopping, um, my tenure, they, they cut my hours. I was, I was brought down to half full, uh, part time and then my benefits were gone. And then I realized, you know what, this is the time. This is the time I need to leave. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm leaving. <laughs> so that was, it was kind of like Mac pushed me, but at the same time I needed that push. I would have never left. I would have never left being that um, I was working. I was making pretty good money and I had benefits. My husband was actually getting credit because I, he was under my benefits. So as soon as I quit, 
Uh, my husband said, what are you going to do with your 401k? And I thought, 401, what? What's going on here? Yeah. And he said, he said, I think the guy, and my husband's a teacher, so he said, I think the guy that helps my with my retirement can possibly help you out. I'm going to give him a call. And next thing you know, I have an AF agent coming to my house and helping me with my planning, my retirement planning, explaining uh, what that looks like because I had no clue. I just knew I had a 401k. And... Um, the AF agent that came to my house, his name was Eric Ong, and he casually nonchalantly off, uh, investigated a little bit about me and said, well, what are you going to do now? <laughs> I was like, I have no idea. I want holidays off. I want weekends off. I want summer breaks off. <laughs> Find me a job that can do that. And yeah. he said, well, you're looking at it. He said, you know, I used to be a teacher. And he told me his story. I used to be a teacher and life happened. And now I'm an AF agent. And I make a pretty good living. So I thought, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> so and when he, and I, I had no idea who Mr. Eric Ong was. So I was just like, okay. And when he left, my husband said to me, I said to my husband, I think that guy just offered me a job. And if he didn't offer me a job, I'm still going to call him and ask him what it is that he's doing so that I can do the same thing. Um, I had no idea what financial services were. I just knew that if I wanted to, I could do whatever I wanted. So um I gave him a call and he told me exactly what I had to do. And I thought, I'm just going to shadow this guy. I'm going to stick to him like glue and uh, see what I can. I, I know I can do this. And that's what I did. And now two years, fast forward two years, and it was probably the best decision I've ever made. And I took that leap of faith that Susan said, because I was nervous, very nervous. But um, I, I can't, there's no complaints here. That's for sure. Yeah, so that's fine. The reason why I was laughing when she said that he said he was successful. Um, so last year, Eric Ong was our top producer in the company and he makes multiple six figure income. So he's a little modest when he was sharing with Penny um, about his success because he has been successful really from the get go, as have you, Penny. I mean, the first year, I know it took you a little while to get your feet underneath you. But this last year, you really turned it on. You have a few ladies on your team and you're continuing to uh, look to building your team. And so just like I asked the other ladies, you know, now that we know your story, what do you really identify with most in our mantras? You know, I help a lot of people uh, create life changing wealth, getting better every day. Which one would you say resonates the most with you? They're, they're all so good. It's just, I, I, each one of them actually have a little place in uh, a place for me, but I would say getting better every day because that's one of the things that I went in with this business. I may not know anything about financial service, but as long as I don't quit, I'm just gonna get better every day, but I can't quit. So that that was the challenge because it is definitely true. As long, every day I'm getting better and every day I'm making better decisions with my clients to plan for their retirement. So it, I really, I did, it really resonates with me about getting better every day because anybody who's about to come into this industry and thinks that they're not going to be able to do it, they might not be, do, be able to do it the first day, the second day, the third day, but they're going to be better than the second day. And they're going to be better than the third day as the days go on. And it really is, we're good. you're going to get better every day. We get better every day. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the great things about Appreciation Financial is we talk so much about personal growth. We have a great par partnership with PSI Seminars. A lot of our agents have gone through those types of classes. Um, but I want to go back to what, something that you talked about when you were giving your introduction. I want to talk about the flexibility. So here we are in the middle of a pandemic, right? We have uh, those of us that are moms. We're homeschooling our kids. We are running appointments. We have our spouse and our house and all those things that we have to keep track of, right? How have you really been able to still keep your business going um, while we're in this situation where we're you know, distance, you know, so now you have two young children at home, plus your husband's teaching from home. So let's we'll talk a little bit about how you've been able to keep that, that going. The, f the flexibility is, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. Um, AF, right away, as soon as pandemic started, um, they gave us a lot of support. We have appointments that are set up for us already. And I've been busy more than ever. Um, I do have the flexibility. So if I'm working and my children need to be tended to, or I need to sign them up for distance learning, I can actually do that. Before I used to come from an industry where I can, I'd have to clock in, clock out for a bathroom break. 
And the fact that I can sit home, work, earn money, help my family and be with my children is, is priceless. I, you, I would have done this for the less amount of money that I'm earning already just because of that flexibility. And the activity that AF produces and uh, the resources that they have for you is you, there's something wrong with you if you don't make it. That's what it comes down to. It really is because it, they make it so easy where I there's I'm busy all the time, but I'm able to be with my children. I'm able to go outside and push them on the swing and, you know, come inside, read a book with them for an hour. I mean, it, it's it's truly the flexibility that I dreamed of. And I will work as hard as I have to, to have that freedom that I have with my family, as far as the flexibility. Awesome. I, I know, like, I mean, you guys can probably see that I'm in a hotel room today. Um, my husband and I just drove a car cross country to our oldest who's in the Navy in Virginia. They're actually out at the beach right now. We're at Virginia Beach. So the uh, family's out at Virginia Beach, but that is the great thing about having the flexibility that we have is we are able to take advantage of this you know, um, situation where we have the virtual virtual environment and we still are busy. Um, so Penny, why don't you share with the, with all the viewers a little bit about your why and why Appreciation Financial and why it would be a great um, move for anybody who's looking for a new opportunity to take a closer look at Appreciation Financial. Well, my why is, is my family. Uh, like I said before, I came from an industry where the, the schedule was was ridiculous when it came to raising children. I just couldn't do it. And so the fact that I have this flexibility, I can go to every birthday, I can take my children to every birthday that they're invited to, well, before pandemic, um, that I can take vacations if I wanted to. I didn't have to put in a request or any of that. That's my why. I get up every morning because there's no way I want to go back to where I had to ask anybody for anything to spend time with my family. That, that's my why. I didn't. I don't have to ask anybody to spend time with my family anymore. And, and that's amazing. Also, my other why is um, building an income for retirement for myself and my husband. My husband has a pension. I don't. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I want that. I want that for us. I want to build income in my retirement. I want to build uh, my nest egg. And I also want to build um, a legacy. And that's the same thing I want to do for my clients. The way that what I want to do for my for myself, I want to do it for my clients as well. And I get to do that. It's amazing. Awesome. And what would you say to anybody who's looking at um, at, you know, an opportunity? Maybe they got laid off, you know, during this whole uh, financial crisis, whether we're in it yet or it's coming. We don't know yet. I know that there's a lot of companies that have been already laying off people. What would you say for people that are looking at and looking at appreciation financial? Um. Kind of like what Susan said earlier, just take that leap of faith. Don't look back. There is uh, lots of sayings with AF and one of them is fall forward. So if you are in the position where you got laid off and you're you're venturing out and you have no idea what you're going to do, um, just take that leap of faith. When you're with AF, uh, there's training, there's patience. Uh, people want to help you. When I first came in, Holly, Donna, uh so many other women that reached out to me to help me is the same welcoming that you that somebody would want to, would get with AF if they were to decide and try us out. Yeah, and then the other thing that you said that I think we ought to spend a little time on, and we can spend a little bit time on on this at the end, is one of the great things that I love about appreciation is really being able to build that legacy, right? And so, like I used to be in the real estate industry, I was a loan officer for about eight years. And it was a great inter industry to be in. I made a lot of money. But what I didn't create was that residual income where every time after I made a loan, I had to go out and look for the next loan. So let's talk a little bit about that. How do you see yourself with now you're building a team? How do you see yourself? Uh, where do you see yourself going with appreciation in the next few years with your team? Uh, I'm, you know, when I first started AF, I was mostly thinking of myself. I need to make this work for me and how it's gonna work for my family. But now that I've been with AF, now I realize how important it is to build a team. One, to create the same opportunities that I'm having as an AF agent for other people. Uh, I know uh, what it is to be uh, stuck in a position or in a job that you just, you just end up being because you have to. And then those who want to take a, a leap of faith and wanna work at something that they've never even um, thought that they could do. 
but you can do it. It definitely is something that you can definitely do. And I've been I've been building a team and I'm creating uh, that residual income, that residual income that is that I know that if I'm not producing, at least I have a team that I'm able to help and that through them, I can also uh, potentially earn some income. And that's just there's opportunities the whole the all the way around. I have um, savings for my children now that I'm actually saving. I used to feel guilty not being able to save for my children, but I was paying daycare. I was paying $1,480 a month so that I can actually have them, uh, somebody watch over them while my husband and I were working. And now that money that I'm, I'm now it's for my children. I'm literally building um, a nest egg for them, for me and for my family. And I'm just very excited. I just can't wait. The sky's the limit. It really is. Well, thank you so much, Penny. Thanks for coming on. We're going to go ahead and bring Brittany on, but hold tight. We will have you back on at the very end just to give a wrap up. So thank you. Um, here's our women. of We have so many different uh, women, so many different opportunities, and we have Brittany Caldwell coming on now. Welcome, Brittany. Oh, you're on mute still. Welcome, Brittany. Thank you for joining us. I know you have to rush off to the airport, but not before you get to share your story. <laughs> you know, I love to jet set, you know. Uh, thanks for Absolutely. having me, Holly. Uh, that's one of the coolest things that's going on, where lots of people have, you know, lost their jobs and their industries have kind of crumbled and, you know, they're kind of sitting around waiting. I actually get to jet set and work from anywhere. I'm in Vegas right now. I visited with friends. Um, it's just been awesome to be able to pivot. For the first you know, five weeks of the quarantine, I left California and just went to Georgia and just worked there. Yeah. So tell mm -hmm. everyone a little bit about how you got here because I love your unique, your unique story as well. Uh, you had a family member, your brother that was here, mm -hmm. kind of pulling you in, right? So tell us a little yes. bit about your story. Um, so, you know, my brother had been with Appreciation Financial for about five years. And anyone who knows my brother knows that every day for those five years, he was asking me to come and explore this opportunity. Well, um, I have a background as an actor. I'm an actor and I was uh, a licensed hairstylist. I'm actually still licensed as a cosmetologist since I was 18. Um, at some point, uh, I decided that I wasn't actually fulfilling my my true passion and purpose. So I stopped doing hair and I went to get my master's in acting. And I focused on that full time for about five years. And um, it wasn't until I was on tour for about uh, a year. I was working in different theaters in Florida and it was fantastic. I mean, it was what I intended to do at the time. but I, I wasn't living how I could have been living uh, financially. It just wasn't, it wasn't doing the trick. I was doing fulfilling work until I wasn't. And that's kind of uh, how it all started to make sense for my life. Um, I ended up writing a play called From Colored to Black. And in the process of writing that play, I did a ton of research about you know, black history. And one of the things that was revealed to me through my research was inheritance has been uh, a huge part of how, you know, white Americans have continued to grow their wealth and keep it. And black Americans weren't really introduced to that. Uh, and my brother was doing this industry that all of a sudden the light bulb came on like, bing life insurance is inheritance. And um, that's what did it for me. I am a black woman who wanted to educate the black community. I'm an actor who wanted to have financial resources. Um, and I thought, well, if I just combine these, then I can educate the black community. I can tell black actors uh, about this opportunity so that they can also have resources. So I'm thinking about all of the people who would help, I, I could help and benefit from this uh, opportunity. Um, so I packed my bags. I took a two week road trip across the country from Florida back to San Diego. And I started to start the process to get my license. Well, um, 
fortunately enough, you know, my brother is, uh, he's found success in this industry. He is a 100K earner. And because he is, he was able to take me on the 100K trip to Cancun with Appreciation Financial last summer. And on that trip, I met people like Holly. And, um, you know, the people at Appreciation just seemed super, super happy. I mean, genuinely happy, happy with each other, happy with what they were doing. And the more I talked with them, the more I saw this limitless lifestyle they were li living, I, it finally hit me that this was an opportunity that I could change my life. And I got super excited. Um, about a week ago, I just hit my year mark with Appreciation Financial, and it has provided me so much, so much in the way of growth. And uh, my life is just better. I have <laughs> great people that I'm around. I have paid off over $20,000 in credit card bills that I racked up while I was living the dream as an actor. Um, and I still get to act. Uh, I, I still do shows because of the flexibility that other ladies like Penelope were talking about. Um, I took off a month in November to go do a show back in Florida because I still love it there. Um, but I just want to make some money in my life right now. <laughs> right on. Right on. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is, it is kind of hard to be sad when you're in Cancun, Mexico, though. I just want to say that, <laughs> you know, but lean, it's like you're on a trip. The company's paying for it. Real tough to not be happy, right? So right. But I guess people could be. There are some sad people looking in, in Cancun, you know. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the uh, mantras that you most identify with. I want to say help a lot of people. We help a lot of people because that was my way in. That was what I fully intended to do. And I have been able to help a lot of people. And I mean, technically, I'm still a baby in the business, right? So there's lots and lots of ways that this can um, spread. But I have some major plans about how I still will continue to move toward putting my plan in the works to make sure that everybody is educated about both the opportunity and the ways that you can create financial freedom in your in your family. So, I mean, I guess it's helping a lot of people to create life-changing wealth. And one of the things that uh, Penelope said that really is something I've been thinking about right now is legacy. Um, I don't have any children, um, but I want to have children. And I wanna make sure that I'm well prepared to leave them and, and bring them into a world where maybe they don't have to endure some of the same struggles that I have. Navigating different roads, being able to uh, educate their children uh, and their children's children and leaving things for their children and their children's children um, so that you know they can just have regular kid struggles. Um, encountering whatever new is gonna come out of how COVID is changing things. That I, I want my children to be able to live as a child and not think about adult things uh, and each level to be able to grow um, and focus as they need to focus during that time. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, I often, Bobby and I look at each other, my husband and I, and we say, you know, like our son, he's seven and he does not understand like some of the challenges that people go through because like his biggest decision is, should I go to the pool today or should I go to the beach? Right. It's not like anything that I had to worry about when I was seven. You know, I grew up with a mom who had multiple sclerosis. So things were a little bit different in my household than they are here. You know what I mean? And everybody has their challenges. So I'm not saying anything about that. I'm just saying that that kid definitely has a great life, you know, and it is a result of the work that I've put in. So it's definitely possible for you as well. So tell me a little bit about your why. I mean, you've been talking about it in and out, but, you know, let's talk a little bit more about the opportunity and let's talk about what you're doing now to bring people in. Sure. Um, of course, that's a, a major why is educating. But I think my major why for myself is that I want to have choices. Um, like I said, I'm an actor. And one of the things that I found myself getting caught up in is taking the jobs that were available to me instead of being able to be really specific about the kind of work I wanted to do. Um, as an actor, oftentimes you feel like you do not have a lot of choices. You can submit for a role, but it's not your choice if you actually get to be seen for the role 
If you're seen for the role, it's definitely not your choice if you get to play the role. Does that make sense? So I, I love the empowerment I have by being financially secure on one side, having something else that I really have. I didn't know I would love it, but I do. I, I love working with Appreciation Financial. And it's shocking because it's so very different than what I used to do. Um, but I, I always say I put on my life insurance costume every day. So I get to go to work and play this role and I'm finding success and fun in it. And I get to create my own work, but not because I have to, um, because now I have the time, the money and the freedom to be able to do those things without having to go, go, go. And another thing, Holly, if I had not made the shift when I did, I would be without a job, period. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just great timing on your part. Right. But I mean, the opportunity at Appreciation Financial would have definitely been something for you to come to. You just want to be this far along in your career. So now you have an opportunity to reach back out to those that were in positions that you that you were in a year ago and bring them with you. So that's pretty exciting that you get the opportunity to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do, thank you so much, Brittany, for being on the show. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Mary back on and we're going to uh, wrap things up. I know she has a special video for, uh, for us all. What do you think, Mary? Is that fantastic? Um, I love the stories. Like I said, um, this can work for anyone at any age, from any background, uh, retired, younger students, uh, mothers, anyone. So I had a couple questions for you, though. Okay. Oh, okay, great. So yeah. Let's let's let me ask you a couple questions. So, um, do you have to be great at sales? Because you know, is this a sales job? I was just you know listening to the stories, and I'm wondering if our viewers are going, oh, but this is sales, and I don't like to sell. How would so, you answer I that? Mean, yeah. So at the end of the day, I mean, everybody's a salesperson. You're selling something, right? I mean, you get up in the morning, you put on your makeup. If you're a woman, you, you're going out, you're presenting yourself to the world. But really what we do is we educate the educators on their retirement. And so we're really educators. We're, um, we're customer service reps. I mean, we go out and we help them look at their benefits. I mean, and you worked with me. Did, did I yeah. feel salesy to you? No, did it seem like no. I the but I you? just, <laughs> no, not at all. But um, I just felt like the audience might be wondering that. So it might be a question that we wanted to talk about because no, you were not salesy at all. Like I said, we started the process in December and it was a couple lunch meetings in person, a couple phone calls. Um, even a Zoom call with my dad because I wanted his input, right? Great, and yeah. which was fun. You're like, sure, I'll talk to your dad. And then wrapped everything up in in April. We started in March and April. So, so I just thought maybe we should answer that question. There's another question. Sure. So, do you have to be knowledgeable about um, retirement plans and finances and all that? Like, what if I don't? You know, math is not my thing. Do I need to know? Like finances and retirement plans? Do I already need to have that knowledge to get started? Yeah, so as you heard from all of the guests today, with the exception of Ashley, Ashley's the only one that got the, um, you know, the, the degree in insurance by all of her experience, but the rest of us started off not being in the industry. We started off not being financial experts. Um, one of the great things about Appreciation Financial is we have great training, and the products that we provide for people are really those types of products where they're easy to learn, number one. And number two is they protect people and people don't lose a penny for being in the kind of products that we're in. So there's a lot of safety in that. They do, you do need to get your insurance license. So during the okay. course of becoming an agent, you would get a lot of training on that because there's 32 hours of education that you would need to do in order to be, get your license. Um, but that's definitely um, something that you'll learn along the way. You'll learn about uh, finances. You'll learn about how to be a steward of your own money as well. And you'll learn all about the different products that we provide to our customers. Fabulous. And I had one more question. You guys Great. talk about re residual income. I don't think everybody knows what that means. So can you talk a little bit about this magical residual income? Yeah, absolutely. So with Appreciation Financial, we get paid three ways. So we get paid by um, when somebody purchases a product from us and they, let's say they buy life insurance. So if they want to buy life insurance and we get paid initially, whenever they make the purchase of the life insurance, we get paid on that. 
So that's the immediate income. Then after the person has been in the product a year, they continue to make their monthly payments, we get paid what's called a renewal. So as long as the person is paying into the product, we get that renewal. And then the third way that we make money, which really is um, the benefit of having the passive income, is if you have people on your team that you bring into the business and then they go out and make a sale. Like right now I said, I'm in Norfolk, Virginia, but I have 110 agents on my team. When they go out and make a sale, then I make an override on that. And so that's where the passive and residual income gets generated is number one through the products that we provide where people are making a monthly contribution and also from the team that we built when they go out and they do work while we might be other places. So that's Perfect. all about how it works. I love it. I just thought we should clear up those questions that the audience is probably thinking, but maybe didn't want to ask. So, you know me, I'll ask any questions to make sure that we're educating the audience. Um, wonderful. Okay. So should we play the video? Is it yeah, time? Let's the video so, and then we'll bring the ladies back on just for their last thoughts. Perfect. And just so you guys know, the video is some of the things that you do besides meeting with clients. You guys have these fabulous retreats and you really are a family. When I got some of this footage and these photos, I was like, man, these ladies look like they're having fun and they're learning. And it, it seems to be this family. So let's go ahead and let's start the video and then we'll bring everybody back on to answer any other questions and say goodbye. All right. Wow. Good. wow. just jamming out to the music right that's pretty good that's a lot of fun let's bring everyone back on I, Brittany had to go jump on that jet plane because you know why she's working she's also jet setting around that's the kind of job that I know a lot of people would like is something that has flexibility and I think one of the things that this pandemic has taught us is that people more than ever want flexibility especially you know you've got kids or aging parents or maybe you just don't want to be tied down to a city tied down to a city or a state and you want to be able to have a flexible schedule you really write your own schedule working for appreciation financial because i know holly you've been on the road traveling and we've been <laughs> in constant communication and you know Brittany was out you know she was in vegas had to go catch that jet plane so um i'm just gonna make sure you guys are all Penelope, you're still muted. So I'm going to let you women say goodbye to everyone. And uh, if there's any questions, I think that we can all agree that we'll go back in and we'll answer any questions that you might have. So real quick, Holly, what if someone wants more information? I think you should share with them how they should get hold of you. Sure. So, I mean, you can definitely go on to any one of the ladies' Facebook pages that we're on today. Um, you can also go to Women of Wealth. You can go to Women of Appreciation. There's a lot of different ways to connect. Um, you can go to womenofwealthsummit.com. Uh, that is the latest and greatest landing page for the website. Um, but definitely any of these women that we're on today, they're all on Facebook. They're all on LinkedIn. You can connect with any of us. We also have Appreciation Financial Careers, 
um, and just let them know that we sent you from the summit so we can make sure you get connected with the right trainers. But what I really like to do is have each of the ladies just come back on and just share their like final thought uh, about Appreciation Financial and about this wonderful opportunity. And uh, if you guys want to share anything special about your social media so that people can connect with you, that's totally cool too. So Susan, why don't you go ahead and go first? Sure. Um, one thing that we didn't uh, really talk about a lot was the fact that this opportunity allows you to create a business within a business, which is a pretty amazing thing. And one thing that absolutely terrified me when I started was the fact that it was a 1099 position. I had had a paycheck every Friday for 30 plus years. So that was a mindset thing that just had to change because if you think about it, when you're an employee and you have that paycheck coming in every week, you are limited by what your employer is either willing or able to pay. So there's a cap on what you can learn. Uh, with Appreciation Financial and with the uh, just the fact that you are a 1099 employee, you are the only one that can limit how much you make, only you. So there is no cap. The sky is the limit. And um, there's no one that can say, oh, you can't earn multiple six figure incomes because it's just based on you. And you can start building a team day one. If you're not able to train them, you can co lead them, which is the most amazing thing about appreciation. So that's one thing I wish I'd started earlier was building. And if you can bring in family members, me personally, what mom wouldn't want a front row seat watching their kids' careers? So that's that's my two cents to end. Yeah. So don't be afraid, guys. Take that leap. Great. Ashley, what do you have for us? Yeah, I just I think that now more than ever is the perfect time um, to jump in. Um, we, you know, have seen what uh, has happened over the last six months, and there's just not you don't know, um, you know, in terms of the market or um, career wise, I think that this is a brilliant opportunity that gives you access to a group of people who are gainfully employed and need help. And there is an infinite amount of, of people to see. And so I just, I don't know, you know, many opportunities right now, given this day and age, and especially with what's going on in the country, that um, gives you so much opportunity, not only for income, but but flexibility and uh, being able to have, you know, everything that you could possibly want. So I think it's it's just a, a perfect time. Awesome. Thank you. And Penny, what do you have for us? Uh, just kind of piggyback off of the girls that it's true. This is uh, the opportunity. People um, are working, are laid off or they don't have a job and they're actually getting paid with unemployment and most of the time people uh, don't transition to a new job just because they don't have that time to do uh, to work and study for another job or, or train for another job and uh, given the circumstances this is probably one of the best times that you can actually uh, jump into AF and um, make that transition. Uh, for me Working, working, educating, and servicing people never feels like I'm working. And that's that's amazing. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say about that other than that. It's, I am also, every day it feels like I'm not working, but I'm helping people out every day. Absolutely. Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you for being a part of the summit this time. You guys are all awesome, amazing women. And I just am so proud to be able to share the stage with all four of you, three of you now that are on. So thank you, ladies. Have a great day. And Mary, why don't you come back on and take us out? Thank you, Holly. Okay, if you insist, I'm back on. Uh, I love all your sentiments and Penny, you're right. Like doing what I'm doing right now doesn't seem like work. I enjoy this. I love being parts of summits and I love empowering women and, and sharing opportunities. I think that's what I love the most is, you know, someone said choices. I think it was Brittany. You know, it's all about having choices in life and, and not being pigeonholed into one thing. So I hope that we reached some women today or men that are looking for the next opportunity. You don't have to be a financial expert. I guess you don't have to be good at math. They probably have programs that help you with that. And you don't have to be a salesperson. You're just sharing information and educating. So I love how you guys put all that. So you guys, thanks for joining us. We'll be doing another summit next month. And I think that one's on couples that work together. Is that possible yes. without 
getting in fights every day. We're gonna find out next month. We'll be broadcasting that right here on this channel. So stay tuned. And you guys, thanks again. It's been great. Ciao. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.